everyone. Hi, this is Sickle Cell Warrior. What's up? I just wanted to talk about ports. Um, somebody, I think Miss Baltimore left a comment on the blog talking about ports. She feels like I've not addressed it enough, so this video blog is dedicated to you, Miss B. Um, I have not had a lot of um, central venous access catheters myself. But, I'm a nurse, so of course I've worked with a ton of them. I've worked with all, almost all of them. Um, so we'll just start from the really easy ones and we'll work our way up. The first one is the peripheral IV, and this is a small one that they put in the supervisual veins of your arms, usually, unless you're a super hard stick, and sometimes they might go to your legs, but some, they usually don't want to put IVs in the feet because this leads to a higher risk of having blood clots and DVTs. So, if they're unable to get a regular um, IV into you, the doctors might suggest having a PICC line. A PICC line is a short-term access catheter. Usually at my hospital, PICC lines are not put in for greater than 90 days. So it's only used for like a few weeks, um, you know, just a, a few days, a few weeks while you're in the hospital or if you're going to be on long-term antibiotic treatment. The PICC lines generally are put in to um, the bicep. Well, a little bit, I guess, put into somewhere around here. <laughs> okay. You think I would know that word. Okay, right like right above your elbow. So somewhere somewhere around your the crease of your arm. They can use either arm. Usually they put it in the more dominant hand because the veins there are better. It's a sterile procedure while it's going in you have to lay flat for it. Um, sometimes it takes longer. They, they will tell you that it takes about 15 to 30 minutes to put in once they've prepped the area but sometimes it might take longer. So make sure that when you're in the hospital ask for pain medicine before you allow them to put the pick line in you because while the pick line is going in if you're in pain you're just gonna have to deal with it and that just sucks. So make sure you ask for pain meds before they put the pick line into you. Um, once they put the pick line in, there's a reg there's a dressing on top of it. The nurses will access it generally to also draw blood and um, give you transfusions, anything like that. Nowadays, they're, they're using the power pick, which is a tunneled catheter, and the bore is somewhat bigger than a regular catheter. Um, and so you might hear a power pick or you might hear a pick line. They're both like generally kind of the same. Um, most doctors prefer the power pick for sickle cell patients. Because of the large bore, they are able to transfuse blood easily and withdraw blood easily. If you do have a pick line, please make sure that the nurses are flushing your pick line. Sometimes when you're not on IV fluids running, the nurses might not flush it. Le um, legally, it's supposed to be flushed every shift at the bare minimum. So anytime someone injects anything into it, they have to flush it with 10 cc's. Anytime they withdraw blood, they have to flush it. And make sure that they flush it at least every 8 hours. Um, the thing about pick lines is that if they're not accessed properly, you do have the risk of causing an infection with them. So Please make sure that whoever is accessing it washes their hands, is wearing gloves, uses a sterile, you know, um, procedure, wipes it with alcohol first. This same applies to all your other lines because it's bad enough that we're sick. We don't want to have to deal with um, infection on top of that. Uh, the other type of catheter is the central, uh, central venous, central line. That's the central line. Central lines um, are usually inserted by the doctor or the surgeon. Sometimes they um, do it while you're just under local anesthesia. Sometimes they knock you out completely to put it in, depending on what the doctor feels comfortable with. I've had this put in before. Hate it. Hate them. I have scars from central lines. So um, usually they pick. Sometimes they pick um, a site in your neck, your jungular vein. Sometimes they may pick um, a vein in your chest. Sometimes they may pick the growing. They usually don't like the growing because, you know, you're peeing, you're, you're poopy and all that stuff. So they usually don't like the growing. But if they can't find anywhere else, they might put it in the growing. And this is put into, like, the femoral vein. Um, also, a sterile procedure going in. The doctors shoot you up with lidocaine and you know lidocaine it stings but it numbs the area and then they cut um, 
just a small a small incision and then they thread the port wherever they want it to go. The thing with the pick line and with the central line is that they're going to request an x-ray before they're allowed to use it. So this is why I always stress have ping meds before you have lines put in because until the x-ray has cleared that the line is in the right place, no one's going to be able to use it or give you anything. So make sure you keep your other peripheral line until that line has been verified that it's okay to use. The central venous line has three, two to three bores, sometimes four um, if you're in the ICU and nurses are able to put multiple things through all the ports. The same rules apply as with the pick line. You know, still um, make sure it's aseptic technique when they're cleaning it, make sure they flush it every shift. Um, it's really uncomfortable, the one in your neck, because when they tape it, the tape is pulling on your skin, and that's like super uncomfortable. Uh, so that's the CVP. The, C, uh, the central line, when you get discharged from the hospital, they will take that out, or sometimes they'll take it out as soon as you get to the regular medical ward if you are in the ICU or the step down unit. This is because it does have a higher risk of infection than the PICC line or the other types because of um, the location that it's in and because the hole is not, it's not closed all, it's not, um, it, it's because of the long incision. So make sure that the nurses do your dressing change every three days for the central line. For the PICC line, it's every seven, seven days. The other one, which a lot of people like, love, 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 is the port. And this is usually given to a lot of sickle cell patients because they do not have good veins anymore. All their veins are shot, their superficial veins are shot, their deep veins are shot. So then we go to the central port. A port, um, sometimes doctors will put the port in under local anesthesia, which I think is so cruel. Please ask for like, something to like mellow you out, knock you out, because it can be painful. Um, what they do is they make the incision, it's a sterile procedure, they make the incision, they lift a flap of your skin, they place it um, cl close to the vein where the port is, and so imagine just cutting a flap of your skin open so they could put this diamond or, um, not diamond, dime sized or quarter sized little rubber thing inside your chest, and then they sew it up. So definitely make sure that you are um, <laughs> as comfortable as you can be, you know, while they're doing the procedure. Ports are used for long-term um, patients. When you go home, you'll, you'll still have the port in you. You might have to go to the hospital every couple of weeks to get it accessed and flushed. Ports have a high risk of getting blood clots in them if it's not flushed with heparin and saline frequently enough. So that's why, I mean, I asked if I could have a port because I'm such a hard stick. And my doctor was like, I don't want to put a port in you. I was like, why don't you want to put a port in me? He's like, well, you, you don't go to the hospital, you know, that often. I, I go to the hospital about four times a year. And he was like, you know, it's better for us to just keep trying with the IVs because the port has a high risk of infection and a high risk of developing clots. Now if you do get clots while you're on the port, um, they're going to probably put you on Lovenox, which is a shot that you have to take in your belly, or might put you on heparin and this will help to dissolve the clots and thin out your blood. So it's a really, like, you have to be sure that you have no other option if you're going to get the port. Most people are able to keep the port in for one to four years, depending on how well their site is kept. Some people will have an infection from the port. Some people will have clots, and the ports will have to be taken out. They can put the, another port in the other side. And usually when, you're, when you have the port, um, it'll just look like a little lump on your chest. So to the ladies, it might not even be that noticeable because your, um, your bosom might, you know, hide it a little bit, but it's a little lump in your chest, and so you'd probably have to wear shirts like these. And what else? Oh, we have the Gershon catheter, which is a bigger catheter generally used for dialysis or hemophoresis. Um, hemophoresis is when they take all your blood out and put you like a complete transfusion. It takes about 10 units of blood to do that. I've only had it done once, and I had the Gershon catheter put into my growing. Um, it's goes in pretty much like all the others, but when you're discharged, it's not like you can't go home with it. They can't do anything with it. They can't put any IVs or anything. It's strictly for either dialysis or um, 
hemophoresis and this is because it has a very high risk of infection and very high risk of developing blood clots so only like certain like nurses are even allowed to use it um, and that's the Groshong. I think those are the main ones that we've covered. We've covered regular IVs, the PIC line, the port, the um, central line, and the Groshong catheter. If I forgot any, just leave it in the comments and I'll probably talk about it there. Alright, stay safe, stay healthy, drink your water, stay well. Peace.